Hey, welcome to this week's edition of 5 Minutes of Management. I'm Frank Coleman here with Rick Bell. Rick, we are just one week away from the spring season of Workforce Live. I can't wait. Uh, next week, we'll be in Boston uh, on April 14th, and we're going to be in New York City April 19th, and then Washington, D.C. on April 28th. Uh, we just locked up our last speaker for Boston, a professor uh, from the MIT Sloan School of Management, so we've got that to look forward to. Uh, so it should be a good spring season. Well, and it's almost baseball season, too. It so, is. So it's just like you're sweeping the eastern seaboard. Um, it, it's it's like your east coast road trip. And last time we visited Boston, uh, we stayed in the same hotel as the Yankees who oh, were in town. So I got to see CC Sabathia and Brett Gardner and some other Yankees just strolling through the halls. No idea who they are. Well, Rick, speaking of sports, uh, this isn't typically a sports show, but after but gonna, today's we're gonna, issue... We're going to sports it up today. Yeah, you might think this is Sports Center. Uh, we <laughs> don't have the quirky catchphrases, but we'll try. Uh, <laughs> namely, uh, kind of a juicy story yeah, you know, out it, of Los Angeles. Yeah, Rick, you, you want to do the honors here? Yeah, you know, you know, Frank, um, um, is, a, is a longtime Laker fan. It, it, it just struck me. It's just like, oh my God, what, what can go wrong now? I mean, this team has lost... Basically, all its games has won 15 games all year. It's the worst record ever in Laker history. And then this happens. So, um, one player, uh, D'Angelo Russell, decided he was going to surreptitiously tape record a, another player, Nick Noodles Young. And, uh, and, 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 and then all of a sudden it pops up on uh, social media. And, and now there's, you know, besides the embarrassment for well, the Well, what team, are the contents of the recording? I well, it, it, it's basically he was taping it um, about his, about Nick Young's girlfriend, uh, Iggy Azalea, and there was some, uh, just some questions about it. So, but... Our but, millennial audience just shot up. Yes, exactly. Just talked about Iggy Azalea. I, I, I know. How do I know her? <laughs> Um, but but yeah, so so the question is, I mean, obviously it's 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 a really silly workforce thing to do. Um, you, you just can't explain why somebody would do something like that. But there are legal ramifications too. So California is a two-party consent state. So all parties um, in in any conversation must provide their consent to be recorded. So basically, um, D'Angelo Russell broke the law. And uh, at, at this point, no charges are being filed. There's, there's uh, apparently they have made amends or are making amends. But it, it just brings up the question of why would you do something like that? Yeah, trust. I mean, huge trust issues. And as a lot of media have reported, the team already had kind of a trust problem. And then here's D'Angelo Russell. 19 years old, he's a rookie, right? So first year in the league, uh, he's out there, you know, secretly tape recording his teammates, admitting to uh, bad behavior behind his girlfriend's back, and then to post it on social media, that's, it's definitely, um, you know, a no-no. Um, you obviously, you can't tape record uh, somebody without them knowing that they're being tape recorded and then post it for public broadcast. Um, yeah. Pretty clear, pretty clear folly there. Yeah, so. yeah. And, and you just have to wonder. It's just like, is, is, this, is this just the way the millennial generation thinks it can act? And, and I just don't think so. I don't think, it's, I don't think it's a generational thing. I think it's just a stupidity thing. Sure. Sure. Well, Rick, we also got a news out of the U.S. soccer landscape of the women's team, specifically four players, are filing a federal complaint against the U.S. Soccer Federation to the Equal, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, alleging wage discrimination. Uh, no real surprise here. They're basically arguing that uh, they're paid a lot less than their male counterparts, uh, especially in light of the relative success that the women's team has had. You know, they won the World Cup. They've won, you know, uh, what, what other... Three. They've won three World three Cups. World Cups. Three World Cups. I think, did they also win four, another tournament? Four Olympic champions. There you go. Um, and, yeah, they, they are... And, and the question is, why has it taken so long? Um, I, I, from what I've read, they just felt this the time was right now um, because they are coming up on World Cup uh, this year, or actually on the Olympics this year. They're, yeah. So, so they'll be shooting for their fifth Olympic championship. Um, so yeah, so it, it's it's just unfortunate that it's taken this long, and uh, it sounds like the the soccer community is rallying behind him. Um, but Landon Donovan actually made kind of an interesting point. Soccer star, former soccer star Landon Donovan, who's since retired, uh, he said pay should be commensurate with with revenues. And uh, 
I mean, slice it any way you want to. I mean, there's, there's no doubt that on the field, the women, uh, women's record dominates the men. The men have never won a World Cup title, let alone an Olympic title. And, and so, yeah, there, there's, but should pay be commensurate upon your success? You know, or on, because the men's World Cup obviously makes a lot more than the women's World Cup. And so is, is that the way it should be based? Yeah, you know, it's a good question. As Deadspin, uh, the Washington Post, some other outlets have pointed out, essentially this is a collective bargaining issue that uh, the women's national team uh, negotiated their pay in a collective bargaining arrangement uh, first in 2012. And I, what news reports are saying, uh, the players' union is, is long embroiled in a contract dispute with U.S. soccer. The team's last collective bargaining ag- agreement expired in 2012, but U.S. soccer maintains that the agreement continued as a revised memorandum of understanding that was signed in March 2013 and was expected to run through the end of this year. So that collective bargaining agreement effectively is up after this year. It sounds like the women's team is essentially trying to preemptively uh, negotiate as probably part of what happens in that new collective bargaining agreement. Uh, And another thing notable to point out, it's not just about... Uh, pay. I think the average salary of uh, the women's national team is something like $72,000 a year, but they're also arguing that they don't get sufficient bonuses for winning, and obviously they've won quite a bit. Right. Uh, they're also arguing that they don't get sufficient travel accommodations uh, comparable to the men's team, as well as uh, the playing fields. A lot of the women's games or on artificial turf, uh, which the, they the, deem is dangerous. Right. And the, entire, the entire World Cup last year was sure. on artificial turf, sure. whereas, whereas with the men's games, they can they have to be played on have artificial to be played on, on on natural grass, which is deemed safer for athletes. So, total picture here uh, being argued by the women's team. I think I also read a figure. I don't know if this is right, but I did read something that 2016-17 projections are actually showing that. Uh, the women's team is going to have more revenues than the men's team. Um, so, yeah, Landon Donovan, it may, that argument may have worked in the past, but the um, fact of the matter is is they're on their way to bringing in a lot more money. Yeah, I think they're ultimately going to get it. Uh, I think, you know, here they, they have a chance at the end of this year they're going to renegotiate a new bargaining agreement. They're probably going to get their way. Um, but, yeah, another example of, uh, you know, the, the gender wage gap being cast into the spotlight. Yep. It'll be interesting to watch. Oh, absolutely. It'll be a great summer. It'll be a great summer of soccer. And then after that, then we, sure. then we are going to have some interesting bargaining agreements. No doubt. Well, that's all we've got for this week's edition of 5 Minutes of Management. Be sure to check out Workforce Live next week in Boston, uh, New York, and Washington, D.C. For Rick Bell, I'm Frank Coleman. We'll see you guys next week. Take care.